one of the most important challenges facing humanity, if you will, is the urban transition that is unfolding in the course of the 21st century. And this transition will be manifest most acutely in Africa and in Asia. And in the case of Africa, we really at a very low base in both understanding what is going on and more importantly, figuring out how to respond to the nature of the transition, but also the consequences in terms of how we're going to live together, how we're going to govern ourselves, and how we're going to ensure that our cities and urban areas become the dynamos of the African Renaissance or the African economic revolution that is required in the course of the 21st century. So what we've done at UCT is to establish an innovative new master's program called the MPhil in Infrastructure Design and Management. The purpose of this master's program is really to focus the minds of urban practitioners in the fields of engineering, the various spatial disciplines such as urban design, planning, landscape architecture, and so forth, and bring them in conversation with social scientists and public policy officers. We're all grappling with the question, how are we going to manage the focus and the operations of our cities and urban areas as this transition unfolds? This program is innovative in many respects. One, it brings together various leading global intellectuals and practitioners who work on some of the critical aspects of this transition and it invites them to bring the expertise into the classroom, which is usually a very intimate setting of between 25 and 30 people from various walks of life, various professional disciplines, grappling over the course of one intense week with various aspects of the urban transition. We've structured the master's program into four core modules. These are all compulsory. They have to be completed if the person is going to get the degree. And in addition to the four core modules, we also offer a menu of various other supporting modules. And all students are required to choose two of those as a complement to the, core, the four core modules and in addition produce a mini dissertation to allow them to qualify with a degree which is an MPhil in infrastructure design and management. The first module really is one that I lead on, it's called Sustainable Urban Transitions and here we take students on an incredible journey, we take them around the globe and we show them how the world is becoming urban how as a species we've migrated from being a rural species essentially to being an urban one and what this may mean. So really the first module is designed to in effect blow people's minds. It's designed to give people a glimpse into the various forces and dynamics that we don't yet fully understand but know will be absolutely fundamental in how we live and how we survive as a species. This module then sets the stage for all the other modules that follow. In the second module, we move on and we give students a deeper grounding in the essential academic expertise of systems thinking. We believe that the urban transition is fundamentally a systemic crisis and it requires systemic thinking to both understand what is going on but also to figure out what are the endogenous and the place-specific solutions to these various questions. And so the systems thinking module really takes ecological systems as the key reference point and as the entry point and tries to build an understanding of how social, economic, political and other systems interact with the ecological system. The third module explores community participation. Now the reason for this is that at the moment in Africa, for example, where we've got about 40% of the African population urbanized, that amounts to about 380 million people. Almost 65% of those inhabitants live in what we call informal conditions. In other words, their shelter conditions, or what we may call a house or a home, is built informally. So in this module, we try and understand how do you best enroll the people who are the most disadvantaged in these cities and towns how do you best enroll them in the process of managing these places in a more sustainable and in a more inclusive way? So what we are trying to do is to really learn from international experience and insights about how best you build community empowerment capability and more importantly, how do you foster partnerships between grassroots organizations and various public bodies and various private bodies? 
So at the heart of this module is the question of citizenship. What does it mean to be a citizen in an urban environment where the state doesn't have enough resources to meet all your basic needs? And the private sector or the market is also not offering enough formal employment to allow your household or your family to have a regular income. That module is run by experts based at the Development Planning Unit at the University College of London, and we also draw in various local activists and experienced facilitators who work with these questions on the ground into the classroom. Finally, we then move on to the fourth core module, which is really about the economy. In this module, we recognize that governments have been trying for some time now to catalyze economic development and what we call urban renewal. We're interested in three dimensions of this. In the first instance, we look at informal settlement upgrading, because this is increasingly becoming a major focus of government investment to deal with urban poverty. So we spend considerable time to look at the volume of investment, the modalities of delivery, and try and understand, can we rethink those investments, those resources, in a way that can really catalyze community empowerment and especially community economic development? The second category of urban renewal we look at is what is called in the South African terminology township renewal. In South Africa, we've got a peculiar problem where various dormitory townships that were produced during the height of apartheid have failed to economically transition into suburbs. And we're trying to understand what are the breaks on this particular phenomenon and why is it when you have a large catchment of urban consumers you don't have the requisite investment for both retail and other forms of economic development to take off. These are case study based, and so we deal with real world problems, real world conditions, but we always keep an international frame within the teaching environment. The final aspect of this module then deals with central business areas in our cities in South Africa. And here again, there's been a raft of innovations in Johannesburg, Durban, Pretoria, Cape Town, and other cities, and a new professional practice and expertise is emerging on how do we understand the new role of traditional central business districts within an understanding of a regional economic system where you have multiple nodes of economic activity, but each of these nodes have a specialization of their own. So what we then do in this module is to really understand what has worked, what has failed, what is required from an institutional perspective and from a fiscal perspective to make these places rejuvenate and to make them magnets of opportunity, but also to make them centers of, of innovation within our urban systems. The African Center for Cities itself is linked to various universities around the world, and we use that network to also bring some of the best academic and professional expertise into the classroom. Finally, throughout the module, throughout the week that the students are together, we always arrange one real-life and fairly complex, messy problem for them to work on. This takes the students out into the field. We obviously use Cape Town and the surrounding areas as a kind of a laboratory. And we then force the students to bring their different experiences and disciplinary expertise to bear on how to solve this particular problem. This MPhil is designed to be an art of alchemy. We try and move between cutting-edge academic thought and the world of practice. And most importantly, to always keep in mind where we are today and how to think about questions of implementation. Thank you for listening and we look forward to welcoming you on our program in the near future.